This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather, there, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And on this day, June 16th, 1996, Michael Jordan won the title with the Chicago Bulls as the Bulls beat the Seattle Supersonics in six games to capture their fourth NBA title. And the funny thing was, the, the Bulls start, then became a team that were 4 0 in finals appearances in their history, which would soon grow to 6 0. But still, this was the time that the Bulls crushed everyone, winning 72 games. Now, the Bulls in 95 shockingly lost in the second round to Orlando, and Chicago had problems. They didn't have John Paxson, Bill Cartwright, Horace Grant, BJ Armstrong, Stacey King, Will Purdue, or Scott Williams, who left by a free agency or retired. But there was a new court. Luke Longley, Tony Kukoc, Steve Kerr, Ron Harper, Judd Bluchler, the Canadian Bill Wellington, and Randy Brown. But shockingly, Dennis Rodman, who was a good rebounder for the Spurs after being with the Pistons, actually fell in Chicago's lap, which was huge. Steve Kerr used to be a Cleveland Cavalier, so was Ron Harper. But anyway, the ensemble was huge. The Bulls won 72 games and had the record for most regular season wins in a season until the 73 win Warriors did it in 2016. Let it be said that the Bulls did lose to the Toronto Raptors in a, that famous game I did a sports catastrophe about a couple years ago. It, well, I was until the 2019 run to the final, the greatest Raptor moment of all time, in my opinion, other than the Sun Dunk Contest of Vince Carter, but still. Yeah, let it be said, the 96 Bulls did lose to the Raptors. But yeah, 72 wins. Amazing. The Sonics had Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, a great one-two punch. Seattle had troubles. In 93, they lost Game 7 of the Conference Finals to Phoenix. And then they lost the embarrassing first-round series in Den to Denver in 94. Seattle then picked up 64 wins at franchise record. And were on their way. So the Bulls and Sonics were the top two teams in the NBA by wins. The Bulls would sweep the Heat in the first round, take down the Knicks in five, which was seemed a little too easy, and then took down Orlando in four straight. Of course, Orlando still had the core of Shaq, Dick Anderson, and a few other people. And of course, that was Shaq's last season before he went to the Lakers. So the Bulls had only lost one game on their way to the NBA Finals. The Sonics started out fast too. They took down Sacramento and then took care of Houston. The two-time defending NBA champion Houston Rockets in four straight. Meaning that you know the champs were dead in fact. In a shocking move the Utah Jazz actually forced Seattle to Game 7, and Utah almost went to their first NBA Finals. Although they would have to wait one more year for that to happen, and John Stockton's famous three-pointer. Now, contrary to probably the belief about that John Stockton shot, that shot, even if Stockton missed, it would have been overtime. It would not have meant anything. But yeah, the Sonics and Bulls both won on home turf in the regular season series. Of course, you played two games against the opponents. The 96 Bulls had Randy Brown, Judd Bushler, Jason Caffey, James Edwards, who used to play for the Pistons, one other, Jack Haley, the immortal Jack Haley, Ron Harper, MJ, Steve Kerr, Tony Kukoc, Luke Longley, Scotty Pippen, Don, Dennis Rodman, John Sally, yeah, that John Sally, who actually left the Raptors to join the Bulls, Dickie Simpkins, and the Canadian Bill Wennington. The Sonics had Vince Askew, Frank Barakowski, what a weird name, Cheryl Ford, Percy Hawkins, Irvin Johnson, not Irvin Magic Johnson, but Irvin Johnson, Irvin without the A, Sean Kemp, Nate McMillan, legend, Gary Payton, Sam Perkins, who was starred for the Lakers teams of the late 80s, early 90s, Steve Scheffler, Deflash Shrimp, Eric Snow before he went to the Sixers, and David Wingate. Anyway, so the Bulls started off fast, winning game one 107 to 90. 
thanks to MJ's 28 points and Rodman's 13 rebounds. The Bulls survived a fourth quarter charge by the Sonics in Game 2, winning 92-88. And it would look good. MJ with 29 points, Rodman with 20 rebounds. In fact, Rodman had 11 offensive rebounds, breaking an NBA record. In Game 3 in Seattle, the Bulls actually crushed the Sonics 108-86. It was a shocker. And the Bulls had it. MJ with 36 points. Frank Burkowski was ejected for hurting Dennis Rodman. And MJ put up 36 points. Rodman 10 points. So the Sonics shocked a lot of people by crushing the Bulls in Game 4, 107-86. Gary Payton was made to guard MJ. Why didn't they do that beforehand? Anyway, Nate McMillan actually came back from injury. And it worked. Sean Kemp put up 25 points at 11 rebounds. MJ only had 23 points. And the funny thing is, it meant that the NBA Finals would not have back-to-back -back years of a sweep. In fact, strange as it sounds, that has never happened in NBA history. Usually when a Finals is a sweep, the next year is not a sweep. Because that's never happened in NBA Finals history. Even starting 1948, it's never happened. Game 5, the Bulls were out charging, but then the Sonics used the second quarter. It was up to Game 6. Of course, the only problem is the Bulls would have Game 6 on their own turf. And Game 7, for that matter, too, because at the time, it was the 2-3-2 system. So anyway, it was Father's Day at 7.30. NBC would broadcast the game with Dick McFadden, Hugh Evans, and Steve J.V., your referees. 24,000 fans came in town. I didn't think they would fit 24,000 at the United Center. I guess basketball seating. But anyway, yeah. Dennis Rodman put up 19 rebounds and did his job. MJ put up 22 points and got his fourth MV NBA Finals MVP. Well, obviously it would be that. The Sonics were outscored in every quarter. Although, it must be said that they only lost by 12 points so, yeah, Sonics, it was bad for people like Jason Lundgren, my buddy from Seattle. But, yeah, the Bulls won in six games. However, if you're watching this on the as a video, you'll see the famous MJ image. There is a solid reason for that image. Because it was on Father's Day, and, you know, MJ celebrating him being a dad. Okay, fine. And MJ should be celebrating with his dad his fourth NBA title. But unfortunately, that didn't happen because a couple of months after MJ won his third straight title in 1993, James Jordan, as in Michael's father, actually was driving to a friend's wedding, but then was tired and pulled, pulled himself over on the side of the road to sleep. Unfortunately, two teenagers would come in and shoot him and kill him. And that would be dishonorable. That is partially why MJ retired in nineteen in October nineteen ninety three, just hours before Game One of the ALCS between the White Sox and the Blue Jays. MJ said he needed his spark back, but it was it was evident why he wanted to retire. His dad was his life and all that. You could say all you want about you know that oh they probably would have thrown. This is a suspension because of his gambling problems, MJ's gambling problems. I doubt that highly. I mean, MJ lost his dad. Like, honestly, how are you going to continue without your dad and all that? And, you know, MJ had, didn't have the spark. And then MJ decided to play minor league baseball because that's what his dad always wanted him to do. And MJ went to the White Sox farm system. And, yeah, he didn't hit that well. But MJ picked up speed in the Fall League, the Arizona Fall League, and then was almost going to be a replacement player for the White Sox when Major League Baseball came through. But thanks to a new collective bargaining agreement, thanks to Sonia Sotomayor, the replacement players thing didn't happen and everyone, all the regulars came on. However, it must be said that MJ actually did not want to be a replacement player and take a job away from people that deserved it because of the strike. So he didn't want to cross the picket line. 
So MJ decided to back off his baseball dream, go back to basketball with that famous two-word uh, fax, I'm back, help the Bulls in 95, almost when the, almost got to the NBA Finals. That would have been an amazing story. But yeah, MJ finally got his motivation. And of course, that famous scene in Game 6, clutching the basketball, crying on the floor. I mean, can you imagine? You lose... Your father, who has been a major influence on your NBA career, and you finally win a championship without him. It was bound to happen, and all that. I mean, as someone who lost his dad before the age of 40, like MJ did, I mean, I can relate. I mean, it took me a while to get past things too because when I lost my dad, it was just days before starting my current job at Canadian Tire. And I felt a little peeped off in a sense because, you know, Canadian Tire was a, this key job for me, getting back on my feet after being let go by Shoppers Drug Mart in a stupid coop. And then, you know, my dad loved hardware, loved tools and all that. I could envision him bugging me for stuff from Canadian Tire and all that. But yeah, it, it hit me hard. And, you know, making this video when I am just close to Father's Day it just hurts because, you know, Father's Day is one of the three days on the calendar. Like my dad's birthday and my dad and the anniversary of my dad's death that well, that haunt me every year. But yeah, like I get it with MJ. All that. This would be the last time Seattle would be in the NBA Finals before their spiritual ancestors, Oklahoma City, did so in 2012, losing to the Heat in Seven games, was it? No, in five games, sorry. The Sonics would keep trying to maintain their stuff from 96, but th they won the division in 97 98, but fell in the second round each time. And the last time, and the next time Seattle had a team in any professional sport to go for a title was Super Bowl 40 in 2006 when the Mar when the so Seahawks got ruined by the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Zebras. I will admit that. The Seahawks would win Super Bowl 48 in 2014. All that. Well, the WNBA team won the 04, 10, 18, and 20 WNBA Finals. And the Seattle Sounders have won two MLS Cups, both against my Toronto FC. Funny thing is that Chicago and Seattle would meet three more times in postseason competition in the Big Four Leagues. Seattle, the only time Seattle's got in Chicago's GOAT was when the Mariners swept the White Sox in 2000 ALC, ALDS, excuse me, by the famous drag bunt by Carlos Guillen. The Seahawks would lose to the Bears. Seattle's football team would lose to Chicago's football team in a pair of the playoffs. The Bulls would win 69 games, don't laugh, in 1997. They would take down the Jazz in six games in the 97 Finals, and then the Bulls would win the 98 NBA Finals, which I talked about with MJ's final shot. The Bulls' 87 wins in the regular season and postseason were the record until the 2016 Warriors broke it with 88. But the Bulls' 87 wins is technically the record because the Warriors didn't win the 2016 title. They lost in Game 7 next to blowing a 3-1 series lead. So the 96 NBA Finals was a classic one. And MJ's famous image will stand the test of time. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.